All right. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever, whatever it is, wherever you are in the world. Uh, it is Thursday, October 7th, if you are happening to watch this afterwards. And just wanted to say hi to all of our viewers who are watching live and any of our viewers who might be watching this afterwards. So this is the Ubuntu Community Office Hours. I am Monica Madden. And I am the Ubuntu community representative and currently kind of the community team. We are hiring and I'm going to spam you all with links for our community team positions, which include director of community. So you could apply to be my boss. I promise I'm a model employee. Uh, or a community operations job, which is really, it's kind of the much more technical cousin of the job that I do here. So it's doing outreach with our community, but also with knowledge of things like bash scripting and development, and maybe you might even develop a snap or two. So I will post the link to that. Both of those jobs are still open and we'd love to have you on the team. Good. Hello, Danny. It's good to see you. And I hope everyone's been doing well. So obviously we have a bit of community news. First, I wanted to thank everyone who took part in Ubuntu testing week. Thank uh, our testers are seriously, we have so many backbones of our community. We're like this multi backboned creature, but testers are incredibly important. And if there's anybody here who did some testing, give yourself a self pat on the back and a high five. And you all helped us test those Impish Indri betas. And Impish Indri, speaking of, is coming out in a week. A week. So, oh, Yannick, hello. So we are going to be having Yannick, please throw that beautiful hashtag up there. Uh, we are going to be having an Impish Indri release party right here on this very channel. We're going to get some talks by uh, some awesome people in our desktop team, including Ollie Smith, who I can't wait for all of you to meet. He is our newest desktop PM, and he's fantastic. He's going to be giving us a little lightning talk. And also, we're going to have a special musical guest who has also been a guest on this channel. So uh, we will have, I will link to the post. We will have tweets. Yes. And let's put this Hashtag Ubuntu 2110 freaking awesome release party. Print the t-shirts. Uh, Anik, you don't have to print the actual t-shirts. I know we do like our custom Ubuntu swag. So, uh, also I got to, uh, last week we didn't, uh, we didn't have a Ubuntu on air because I was at the open source summit, got to meet one of my canonical colleagues, got to meet some members of the Ubuntu community who were there, um, either for their company or as as community attendees, it was really great to get to meet people in person. And I cannot wait till we get to have some events, hopefully, hopefully next year, where we get to get some of the fantastic people in the Ubuntu community together. And so please, if you, uh, if your loco is doing anything is um, that you would like us to signal boost, we have a new email address too. Yay. Thank you people at IS. And I'm going to put this here. So once we have more people on the community, Community team, this will go to everybody. But for right now, this is a great way to update us with any community news and events that you want us to share. So, all right. But without further ado, we do have some very special guests. And so I want to bring them onto the stream. And we have Till Hi, from I'm our desktop team. 
Yes, and I'm also the leader of the Open Printing Project. For mm -hmm. 20 years, for 21 years now, I'm doing everything to make printing just work in all operating systems except Mac and Windows. And and it's go it's going on. And today you will hear what 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 we are all doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, how are we going to make the next generation of tills? So <laughs> yes. And one of the people who helps a lot with that is Avik. Hello. Hi, and Monica. So, hi. And so you are a PM with the, and you've got your awesome shirt. Let's see oh. it with open printing. Yeah. So my job uh, here in open printing is to make things work for the entire community and make sure that the project goes on. And we have next generation of tools to carry on the baton. Exactly. And it seems like you all are doing a really good job. And we've got two of those future tills here. We have <laughs> Pranchu. Hello. Um, hi, Monica. Hello, everyone. And Div Yashil. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. And so you two were both Google Summer of Code students this past year. Yes. Okay, and for anyone who is who doesn't know what Google Summer of Code is, could one of you just give um, give us a brief expl brief explanation of what this program is? Uh, okay, I'll go. Uh, so Google of Google Summer of Code is a program by Google uh, where uh, there are multiple open source organizations that participate in and uh, college students are supposed to apply to those organizations. And then those organizations select some students and those students, you know, uh, code during their summer holidays and they work on an open source project. So it is uh, really a very great initiative by Google, you know, to, it also helps the open source to, uh, organizations to bring in more people to contribute. And at the same time, it also helps students to, you know, uh, get a taste of what actual real world software development is. And it really helps a lot in their careers. Awesome. So anything else to add that, um, that, that anybody else would want to add? Uh, yeah, I can add a few words like okay. uh, uh, Google gives us this wonderful platform. I mean, uh, if anyone is looking for, uh, you know, to start their career in open source or I mean, mm -hmm. Google is uh, helping out with this program of Google Summer of Code where you get introduced to the open source world. So that's your first step. Mm -hmm. And especially now, isn't, you know, is there a financial stipend for the students yes yes the yes. students get they get a stipend the mm -hmm. the amount is depending on the regional uh, regional typical uh, salaries and this way this the student can dedicate to their coding work they don't need for 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 you are surviving doing things like a McDonald's summer of burgers. They can really <laughs> flip bits and not burgers. <laughs> that sounds so tasty, they can really but... concentrate in their coding. So it's not so only learn about... a lot and, and this helps for their career. And this also helps us as many continue as volunteers in our project. Mm -hmm. So this program is not only about just students coding. So there are mentors who are there to yes. uh, help you out, who are there to guide you on what needs to be done. So there is this obviously a selection criteria. It's like Google mm -hmm. gives the platforms to the open source orgs where they can put up their projects. It's very helpful for orgs like us who are not that heavily funded. So we can have mm -hmm. our projects. Uh, so it, it's a win-win situation for the orgs and the uh, students as well. So we can have our projects where the students can apply and we select the students uh, based on uh, their how they perf perform during the evaluation period. 
uh, or how they write up their proposals. So based on who is selected, now we have we try to mentor them, guide them on the basics or how to uh, carry on, how to work on the project for the next three months. And the evaluation is on a monthly basis. So after uh, nice. each month, it's a three months program. So after each month, uh, there is an evaluation where we uh, rate the students. And if they pass uh, that evaluation, uh, they get the stipend. But if they fail, they are out of the GSOC program for that year. And uh, so uh, typically, uh, if a student is well communicated with the mentor and has that urge to learn, uh, they do pass out uh, easily. Yes, yes. This way, we uh, this way, Google is also uh, do having some protection against if if a student applies only to steal the money from Google, that he cannot do so, as he would not would not pass the evaluations when he does not work on the project. Yeah. And so another important it's... point uh, also for for us, especially for us as at Open Printing, for the Google Summer of Code is that in general our project open printing is not attracting very well volunteer uh, uh, contributors by itself other projects mm. e for example like gui projects like gnome or like a game <laughs> project so they are much more easily attract developers yes yeah, sometimes printing up and might not yes, be the most yes. attractive yeah. thing <laughs> yes. Yeah, and right. so, and so, it, Google Summer of Code helps to make us to make to make us being seen and mm -hmm. and to find to find uh, to find people to build up a team. Yeah. Now, I would like to um, get the chance to ask our um, our students. So, would you mind? telling us maybe kind of what made you, when you went through the list of all the programs that were participating in Google Summer of Code, what made you decide to, uh, um, decide to apply to open printing? Okay, so for in my case, uh, open printing is quite prominent in our college, right? Most of our seniors have done the GSOC program from open printing. And not just open printing, there are also like Zulip, and I did have other options I could really look into that I had seniors in which they could guide me. But the thing about open printing was that I felt that this was the closest organization to Linux, and I was really interested in contributing to Linux. So yeah, for me, it was that was the thing that really made the difference for open printing. Awesome. And Pranshu, how about you? Uh, one thing I'd like, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, the reasons that Devishil mentioned are exactly the same as those of mine. And one thing I would like to add is uh, when I was in my first year of BTEC, so we had this hackathon in our college where uh, a week sir was invited as a chief, uh, like speaker for the event. Uh, so during that event, he talked about uh, open printing and in general open source contributions and stuff. And uh, that was also, uh, you know, a good source of motivation for us to get into open printing. He told us uh, how the work done into open printing uh, directly gets incorporated into Linux and how uh, the code that we write is actually going to be used by a lot of people. And uh, that was also a you know, very great incentive to choose this organization. Yeah, so Avik, it sounds like you have a really good outreach um, pro program here. So how did this? So how did you start this university outreach? And maybe what were some of the reasons why you started it? Uh, that's a wonderful question, uh, Monica. So uh, when I got uh, introduced to open printing, uh, it was in the year of two thousand and fifteen. During mm -hmm. that time, um, I mean, uh, when I was speaking to uh, Till, uh, I mean, I first met Till in a, in the open printing yearly summit uh, in uh, in Apple campus uh, that year, and I was talking to him regarding GSOC and all. And at that time, uh, it was like uh, it used to be only one student who used to apply, one or two students who used to apply oh, wow. for GSOC. 
because as still mentioned like uh, everybody is interested to uh, you know work for kernel or gnome or android or other lucrative so called uh, lucrative uh, or well known uh, orgs so when Easy it comes to pre things, which you yeah, see on, so, in, in in your in in your day to day life in front of the right. computer not is not what is happening in the background by the operating system <laughs> right that's so, running uh, all those things and and another mo major important thing is like you have you ha used to have a lot of uh, tutorials uh, available mm -hmm. for those uh, for those projects or whatever you say so and there were many people uh, in the community who could help you out but the main thing which was lacking in uh, printing was like we didn't have a so called community what we had is like stalwarts like till uh, michael sweet ira mcdonald people who uh, who i mean the experts in the printing industry who were contributing for this space and carrying on mm -hmm. things forward but the community was not growing so uh, the main thing uh, if you want to grow a community you need to work on the grassroots level so i thought mm -hmm. like uh, I mean, before uh, hitting that problem of why students are not applying for GSOC, uh, maybe I need to uh, take care of the level uh, at the bottom of the pyramid. So that's when I started to talk uh, to students from different universities. So uh, like, uh, and we started it much before GSOC or, or any other mm -hmm. program. So, so we just started to reach out to students talking about open printing. Uh, how they can uh, apply for open source and because in first year uh, most of the students are very new to programming uh, and mm -hmm. they do not even know what is open source or how to apply for it because that term is not popular to everyone so uh, it first thing is like uh, it was like the students need to be made familiarized with open uh, open source then comes mm -hmm. open printing so the third step was to make them familiarize with open printing to have somebody who can help them out uh, as a mentor who can uh, who can i mean they shouldn't feel like uh, uh, am i asking a silly question so we yes, need people it's like so like, important right so uh, we need people like till we i mean then i talk to till like okay fine i'm talking to the students but you have to handhold them till the point that they are uh, uh, eligible enough to take up the next step so that's how the university reach started and uh, it was uh, it was in uh, divya shil or transhu's college uh, it was in uh, indian institute of technology uh, mandi it's a nice place in between the himalayas so you have mountains all around mm. and they have a nice university where they invited me uh, to talk uh, in one of their hackathons so so that time it was a wonderful opportunity again to meet with the students talk to them about open printing how they can contribute uh, so that's how it all started and i'm happy to say that that ecosystem probably worked out now these students now divya shil and pranshu were mentored by uh, by few student few people who were our ex students so they have uh, they in... <laughs> it's like a mentorship you know you're recruiting your mentors for the future and that's so important so you give people like that environment where they feel safe to ask questions and they're not thinking like oh my god are they gonna laugh at me for asking this so and i think that i know we've had some people kind of talk about like well what can we do in universities and schools to um to increase community turnout and i think the way that you did it with doing um with kind of attaching it to part of this hackathon that the school was doing and then just kind of growing it organically and again at that grassroots just seems like it's just such a good approach that's obviously worked re really well and one more point to add is uh, uh, bhavna our other uh, gsoc student uh, she was there uh, she was one of the speakers in linux plumbers as well for the open printing mc awesome 
Yes, yeah. we are trying to in, in, integrate them fully in our project and also to make them participate in, in the conferences where, you, where we are getting to. Mm -hmm. the stu also, the student who several years ago has done the first approach for IPP over USB support, we have, t we have uh, taken him to Canada to... Uh, to uh, an open printing summit, which which nice. was uh, running there in Canada, and it was in and uh, so he was participating really on our principal meeting. There Very was one nice. More, one more student whom we took to Portugal uh, to speak in Columbus. So we try to give the you know you know best of the opportunities to our students which I feel uh, no other, uh, you know, there are very few orgs uh, who, who can mm -hmm. do this. Yeah, and it's just, and that's exactly what good kind of community managers and kind of other, you know, people in that area do, is that they use, you know, their role to boost people up. And to make what they're doing visible, give them that recognition to kind of shine the spotlight on someone who's new. So, so um, Div Yashal and pra Pranshu, what did you work on this summer? What were your projects? So, uh, my project was about uh, services broadcasted on DNS stick. Right, there are a lot of services that are available which you can actually explore through Ahi, but they are not very uh, easy to find out. There are a lot of network interfaces, a lot of protocols, so it sort of spams the entire browsing session, and you you find a lot of entries, and it's not very easy for a user who doesn't really have the idea of how these are made and how they're all the same services. So my project was to create a a, a dialogue inside the GNOME control center which uses Avahi in the backend and then filters all the services, uh, makes sure that this is a unique services service that is showing up. And after that, I was supposed to be placing it inside that panel itself. So that was my entire project. So I was supposed to be fetching all the services on the network and then publish them in GNOME control panel. Very cool. And Pranshu, what a, about you? Uh, my project was to create a universal filter function. Uh, so uh, before my project, uh, what actually you know used to happen was that there were uh, several binary executables for different fun filter functions, and they used to be executed externally. So uh, so this was a you know very resource consuming task for like both the operating system and the user. Uh, so to uh, sort out this bottleneck, it was still the idea to create a single universal filter function that would, you know, uh, like execute all the functions internally through a single process and instead, instead of relying on multiple processes. So that was my project to create that universal function. Cool. Yes, this is to to accelerate the pointing because when when one prints a job with cups to convert the input data into the printer's native language, there are often several filters uh, uh, called in a row. For example, to turn uh, a JPEG image into PDF, then PD PDF into uh, into cups raster, which is a universal raster format, and then cups and then cups raster into the printer's native format. And so you have started three processes, three extra external processes. Each one is loading several libraries, occupying space, doing a lot of hard disk access and so it it takes resources and if if you could call one process which does it all you take a lot a lot less resources to do the same job uh, so uh it, so it seems like that was a really good job at explaining kind of what the benefit uh that these projects are are going to have to the wider open source community. And I've noticed that Div Yashil, I think, is having connectivity issues. So we will make sure we get back to him. But Pranshu, what is one of, oh, and he's got a new connection here. Okay. 
Perfect. Um, so, good timing. So, with, with with you just having shared what your projects were for GSOC 2021, what would you say was the most maybe interesting or surprising things that you learned or did during the program? So for me, it was, uh, I had never really coded in C before. Uh, mm. I had coded in C, but the fact that I never really built such a huge application uh, in C. And you know, it was the first time that my stack was entirely made of C code. Usually I used to work on the web and we used to have different languages. Python was there at the back end, different uh, front end languages. But here, both the front and the back end was done by C. So for me, that was really exciting and it felt quite like an accomplishment to actually be able to do I th that. I'm not a programmer, but I, I hang out with a lot of them and doing uh, an entire program in C does seem like a major, a, uh, a major accomplishment. Yeah, for me, it was something like really exciting, right, since I started the program. So yeah, yeah. that... That was it for me. Awesome. And Pranshu? Uh, so in my case as well, uh, doing the entire project on C was definitely a challenging thing to do. Uh, other than that, uh, like before actually, you know, working on my starting working on my project, all I had done in open uh, open printing in cups filters was to, you know, work on the issues that people were facing and uh, try to resolve them. So that was all that I had done. But uh, the GSOC mm -hmm. project was completely a you know different thing to do and in a different uh, different domain. So I did not really had much idea about how exactly I'm going to complete this project because uh, I just had a uh, high level idea that this is what I'm supposed to do. But how am I going to do it was not very clear. So uh, that part of the process, you know, was. Uh, very challenging as well as a very great learning experience when I interacted with Tail and uh, you know figured out the implementation details of the program. Uh, so that was. Yeah, Tail and Avik were really really helpful. I don't really think the fact that uh, the amount of emails uh, like when I used to <laughs> ask for me to Tail sends such a huge email as a response. Everything is so well. <laughs> nicely explained uh, and with all the codes and all, uh, all the archives linked inside of it. So you don't really need to get back to him. This, everything is there inside his response. So that is something really helpful. Awesome. That's, um, and just again, uh, so are either of you interested in maybe GSOCs in the future of being m mentors to students? Uh, definitely yes. Uh, it's my uh, like in a in my bucket list to be connected with the organization uh, throughout. And so yeah, definitely I'll be looking forward to either mentoring the students or participating again in the organization. Yeah, the same. Awesome. Yes, like one this. thing is students can participate up to two times. So if nice. a student has nice. still a piece of course in front of him or her. He mm -hmm. or she can participate again. So oh, if nice. a student who worked well for us and he he or she uh, is interested to participate uh, with a student project again, we 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 often we we we, ha we often have let participate participated them again mm -hmm. and this is a great this is a great thing as we know the student and the student is is uh, knows our project so the so we do not need to really do another onboarding so it is a great opportunity mm, if a student true. if a student participates twice and otherwise every student independent how often he participates uh, he he uh, he is invited to party to to contribute, and he is also invited invited to participate as a mentor, which 
as, an, as a mentor, you can participate any amount of times. Mm -hmm. And also after, after the course is over, for, me, for being a mentor, you don't need to be a student. And, That's true. And several students have particip participated as a mentor. And also, some students have worked in a team on, on creating our current website. So the website nice. which you are seeing, the nice site in which I'm embedding every, every, every month uh, my monthly news post, all this is made by our former Google Summer of, of Code students. Nice. And actually, the let text me go of ahead. The news posts is coming from me. The rest is coming from the former students. Yeah, let's go ahead. And is it it's the openprinting.github.io? Uh, yes, yes, and www.openprinting.org, the intuitive name you remember, is forwarding to there. Nice, and that is, you're right, that is a gorgeous site. Yes, and yes. So the hosting is done by GitHub, and the pages are not written in the awkward HTML, they are uh, written markdown. in Markdown. And GitHub like is markdown. converting these pages into HTML <sighs> automatically. One simply does, has a special repository in the project. You simply git push the pages to there, and then GitHub does the rest. It's kind of magical. Static site generator pages are just ugh, amazing. So even the even the website was uh, developed by our students and the logo also. Nice. And and that's just, I mean, and that is just a way, like having your community create your content and create like the infrastructure that your content runs on. Oh my gosh, that, that um, what are some of the other ways that either the um, students, whether they're kind of GSOC alumni or other students who have just heard your talk and want to be involved what are some of the um, other things that your students have done uh, there is another program which our students worked on last year that is uh, linux foundation mentorship program lfm mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this year uh, we are working with the linux foundation uh, team for uh, community bridge so community bridge is another sort of program where it's the platform is given to us by linux foundation where uh, there there i mean there are many many companies who get uh, benefited out of what we do in open printing because uh, we are currently maintaining cups which is the backbone of the printing open source printing system uh, because uh, and uh, cups filter so these are the mainly two important things uh, for which the open source uh, printing happens so, and uh, and because of this the linux distros are getting uh, benefited because of this mm -hmm. uh, uh, chrome is getting benefited so uh, the platform is we can i mean if somebody can donate us these companies if somebody we can have the fund and from that fund we can have mentorships uh, going on we can have uh, people uh, work for any any uh, you know for me as uh, mentorship programs and all so it's not only gsoc if somebody is willing to work for open printing we have the doors open and we want more and more students and so this is something which i generally uh, tell to every student that uh, do not limit yourself only to gsoc gsoc is a wonderful platform mm -hmm. but the horizons of what google tries to say google every time google uh, recommends that okay don't forget of things after gsoc because that's that's the actual space so you, you have got into the open source space now i the opportunities are endless so mm -hmm. work for that and and do not think that if some i mean somebody uh, who doesn't get selected for gsoc thinks like okay my introduction to open source is uh, there's the end of it no no. And uh, no. you, you, you try to if you are if you are if you want to come first, you need to decide which org you want to apply for or area mm -hmm. of where you want to work, and then try to get associated with the, with the mentors, with the people of that community. Try to see what they are working on. Uh, do some uh, test. Uh, I mean, take up some testing work. Uh, even it is fine if you want to change something in the readme. 
so mm-hmm. that's how you you exactly. get associated i mean do not try to hit the uh, issues first so go go for the basics uh, do a uh, take up a testing job so that will help you to get familiar oh my gosh the- testing so helpful and so it's one of the best ways to get started if you are completely new right so and that is that's such a good point um kind of personal story i applied for gsod last year google season of of docs and i applied to like three programs that all looked really interesting to me a, a, um a lot of them had to do with open source and medicine actually and i uh, and i applied to open mr um open mrs and i wasn't picked but i'm like you know what i had just quit my part-time job and i had lots of time to do more open source things and i'm like i'm going to work on my proposal and so i did and i basically just did like an unpaid gsod and it was fantastic and i think if you apply for programs that you know that do spark an interest and maybe if you don't get it it's like we'll be like well i still want to work on this and chances are it's going to benefit you in it's going to benefit the project and benefit you because right. it's that experience it's those networks and you have like a body of work that you can point to and say look at my repo or look, uh, look at this page and i think that it's this open source participation especially for new students or people switching careers can be so it's so powerful so right. yeah so for both of our students what are kind of your um what are you, uh, i know you talked about wanting to do mentorship or maybe applying again for a uh, gsoc what are some of your what are some of the things now that you are open source contributors What are some of the things that you might want to do in the future? Well, I would like to continue on my project, like my GSO project. Uh, mm-hmm. It was completed, but I, I could always add stuff to it. Uh, there are a lot of things that I could do, could still add. So yeah, I would love love to start with that, and maybe nice. then look into something similar. Nice. uh in my case uh, uh one thing that i'm really looking forward to is you know to motivate uh, the juniors that we have in my institute uh, you know to uh, like to get tell them uh, give them information more information about what open printing does and uh, try to bring more people on board uh, in the organization so that we eventually grow as a community so this is something that i uh, like i have plans to do and i would be willing to do awesome Cool. And Avik, what are the organization's plans for? I'm guessing you all will be applying to take part in GSOC and other mentorship programs the next year. But any plans, like especially as maybe like we'll start going back to in-person conferences next year, maybe. Um, what? Um, what are your kind of potential plans to help to help keep this community growing and build off of this what seems like a really strong start uh yeah monica so one thing which has been uh, put on hold for quite some time is a meetup uh, open printing meetup and open printing hackathon so mm-hmm. in between because of covid and all so all our meetup we have plans uh, got cancelled and things like that so we had plans to have an uh, you know have our ex students current students uh, to uh, uh, do a local meetup where we can uh, speak about our next things where we can discuss brainstorm what can be done uh, of things like that and uh we also planned for an all uh, or for an hackathon event where we will put up some some uh print related uh, uh, your, uh things to work on or innovate uh, something to innovate on 
so that uh, students can participate and work on and we can um, give them some nice uh, gifts or something. So these two events um, have been put on hold for one year or so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because when when it comes to virtual, so hackathon is a pretty tough thing to manage when it comes to, uh, we can have meetups, or, but uh, the level of interaction that you get to do uh, when you meet somebody physically, uh, that thing probably uh, is missing for virtual things. So we are just waiting that if this thing continues, then maybe we'll go for virtual, otherwise we'll plan for some physical meetup. So this is something uh, which is in the cards and uh, and uh, we will prepare for next year GSOC as well. Uh, so we will have students for GSOC and uh, we will do community bridge uh, as well. Yeah, and we will definitely promote this to university students who might be in the Ubuntu community. That if they're looking for a way to get involved with open source in a slightly different way that still really obviously benefits Ubuntu, as Till can definitely tell us, um, we will certainly encourage them to apply. That would be awesome. Yes, mm -hmm. and some students are even so lucky as the, as the Google Summer of co the coding periods. It ends more or less when we have feature freeze for our, our autumn edition of Ubuntu. And sometimes a student project will make the direct connection into, the, into this autumn uh, edition of Ubuntu. And so... Uh, the student project and ends in August and right mid-October, it's on a screen near you. That and is one, great. And one more benefit is uh, whatever gets worked on in open printing, that gets into Ubuntu. Ubuntu is the first distro to take up that all because of Till. So Yay! <laughs> We're so lucky to have Till. <laughs> yes. yeah. I'm I'm leading open printing. I'm the responsible for printing in in Ubuntu. So it's all in the same hands. And so there will be no connections will get which will get missed. It will get 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 get, get all straight through into into Ubuntu. Yeah, so, and maybe when Till finally decides to step down and re retire and tink and probably retire to tinker on printers and still work with open pr printing, that maybe one of your GSOC students will be the ones, will be the one who gets Till's job, so, and comes <laughs> to work here and make sure that let that let Linux users have a great printing experience. I, I remember a nice, uh, nice uh, sto event or a nice situation, which I think uh, will be a, this will be a nice platform to share. I uh, remember some of my colleagues in Lexmark. I, I, I my day I do my day job in Lexmark. Uh, so Lexmark is a global printing and fact printer manufacturer company, and we were working on some drivers and. That time we were working on PCLM uh, drivers. So, and in Ubuntu, we just had our PCLM filter, which was worked on by another of our uh, great students, there, Sahil. So, Sahil worked on our PCLM filter, and in the filter file, Sahil had put in his name and uh, in the copyright section, I mean, there was his name and the email ID and everything. So, uh, my colleagues uh, they, from a different team, they were trying to work on PCLM and they had some uh, queries or cl clarifications they wanted. And PCLM was brand new and, and uh, probably Ubuntu release was in some, in the, some few months and till picked it up. And they saw that, well, in Ubuntu, we have this PCLM and this person, somebody known as Sahil Arora has worked on it. And there is his nice email ID. So they got in touch with him. And uh, Sahil was nice enough and uh, Sahil gave them all, uh, cleared all the doubts and all and uh, Sahil copied me in loop, Am I, in, I mean, while replying to my colleagues and they thought like, okay, our colleague is also involved in it and Sahil, so it was, 
nice story so that's what i i tell the students that what you work on that that thing is used by anyone who tries to print so your yeah. code will be used uh, by anyone who tries to print out of ubuntu or any other distro so that's the benefit of working for uh, open printing yeah Oh man, that is a fantastic yes. story. Yes, and one thing about Zahil and PCLM, there's even a better story. Zahil did not apply for PCM, PCLM. We as open printing as the org, we did a mistake. We posted projects and it turned out that two of the projects were redundant. They were the same thing to them. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it is the org as we have done the mistake we had to fix the mistake so i asked i asked zahil whether that would be a problem for for him to do another project we didn't, mm. we didn't want to lose them or we didn't want to complain him at google that that he was uh, selected and did not get a project or or a redone project and then i told and and pclm we did not have this on our list it is uh, as uh, the gates closed for student applications but only but only afterwards on the printing summit we we i found out where one finds specs for pclm note that it's not pcl pclm is a kind of of cheap printer pdf which is raster only without fonts and so so then i told i have this I, I i have the specs would you make a filter for that and he mm -hmm. told yes and he he made it and with the help of a great upstream maintainer of a q of of a pdf handling library qpdf the upstream maintainer is j bergen build because, because this library needed some some extra features too they made it in time for the feature freeze of the autumn ed 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 edition of of ubuntu and so this new filter made the connection into ubuntu nice that's <laughs> so yes it's, it's so this really kind of great. this last it's really minute it's, it's really like taking a, a passenger from from a late flight with a car driving over the tarmac to the connection flight and he makes it and, and arrives in time and not only that but maybe has to like take over the flying for a bit there so <laughs> yes. that is a fantastic story so yes. So as we're starting to, and I don't see any questions from the audience. Oh, yay! Yes, someone in our YouTube chat thought that that was funny, and that really was. Um, but it shows you that just that these contributions can come from anywhere and can make such a huge difference. So uh, for anybody who especially might be watching this as they are thinking about applying for GSOC, or if maybe there's a new org that's thinking of, you know, being a mentoring organization for the first time, what advice would you all give to them, either as students applying or as an organization applying? For uh, all the new orgs, uh, I think the most important thing is. Uh, is uh, to uh, you know that connection space you need to uh, popularize or or radiate to what uh, you are all about what what is it that uh, what is the problem that you are trying to solve or uh, you know the, your main areas uh, of work and uh, because you i mean you start connecting with people you start talking and uh, you know you need to do that hand holding because uh, keep you need to keep in mind that uh, whenever you we want to have somebody to work on your projects you need to help them out don't think that uh, the student or somebody uh, new working for your project knows everything so it, it shouldn't be the case you need to uh, sometimes even we it, it has also happened we have taught our students the basics of programming so mm -hmm. it's not only that they are uh, coming to open source first because few of them are uh, new to programming as well. 
like what divya shil mentioned like uh, mm-hmm. he was new to c programming there can be others as well so th- that thing is uh, important and for the students who uh, want to apply uh, do not wait for that uh, ultimate day or or when the application <laughs> starts then yeah. apply and start learning do not do that <laughs> so start your learning process well ahead of time so yeah. contribute talk uh, make yourself visible in the community so that people know mm-hmm. people know you so yes. when there is a program and you create a proposal people ha- i mean they will people will have the confidence in you okay i know this guy this we, he has been active he has been vocal he has been trying out new things so that uh, I, the ice will already be broken by that time. Very true. All right. And what about our students? Any advice you would give to someone who is applying to GSUC 2022 or years afterwards? Uh, one advice that I would like to give to people who are applying for GSOC, uh, be it in any organization, is that uh, stay consistent in an organization. So uh, what I think one should ideally do is, you know, start early in that organization and then you are free to work at your own pace. Uh, like even if you are like slow to grab the concepts or the like you are not able to familiarize yourself with the code base, you still have the time to slowly understand it. And that thing really helps and ultimately uh, uh, stick till the end because the only people who get through are those who stick till the end. So like there are a lot of people who just, you know, get into the organization, start some contribution and then they eventually, you know, stop contributing. So that does not work. Uh, You have to stay invested till the end. True. Well, in my case, what I would really say is that you should really make the initiative. Don't judge an organization or the code that they're doing from the outside. Just contact the mentors and then hopefully they'll guide you through. Like in my case, in open printing, I don't know if it, if this is something that is there in other organizations too, that you just contact the mentor and then they'll find an issue that is suitable for you and also teach you through the process of how you can actually fix that. So it looks very difficult uh, from the outside. It, the code looks very overwhelming. But once you get inside, you take the help from the mentors, it becomes really doable. All right. Well, excellent. Well, thank you. And I think that this is going to be a really useful video, not only for people watching now. And I want to put this yes, comment and- by one of our viewers up for everyone to see but also as we air this again closer to the start of gsoc in 2022 hopefully people can watch this and take that advice to heart yes and i also want to say something about what we are searching for in the in the next in 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 the next time we have done ex- excellent progress in in the core part of, of printing with cups, with uh, with cups filters, with printer applications, and with the switch switch over to the new architecture, we 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 are doing a lot of progress. We naturally need need again uh, several people to contribute to help us with this. But where we really eagerly meet people is also on the GUI side, the graphical user interface, the printer setup tools, uh, the the print dialogues. There it's very, very important that if we in the core system are modernizing the architecture and going and, and getting forward to, to, to make things m- more smooth and more easy to use. It's very, very important that the graphical user interface keeps pace with it, as if the graphical user interface is using the old architecture, the old the old uh, application interfaces and system mm-hmm. interfaces. In this, in this case, we will not get the new user experience and we will waste a lot of time to to create workarounds to create adapter applications which are between the graphical user interface and the core system and this we we want to avoid we want to have full integration of the graphical user interface and therefore we really eagerly need also people who work on the gui side 
and mm, very, I wonder very, if both GTK uh, QT very very important is QT the print dialogue of QT is really not cute we really need people <laughs> there to make to make it better <laughs> Yeah, and I wonder with um, with kind of some of the work that Ubuntu is doing with with Flutter, if someone might try. Uh, I know we have a few people in channel who do play with Flutter, um, Yannick, um, <laughs> and I know that we will probably um, that might be set something that we might try in the future. So that seems more like a desktop in Java thing. But no, but having your right, having the GUI front ends, no matter what they're done in. So they're using all of this amazing development that's been done. That's important. Yes, and, and the development of GUIs would not, not only look nice on the screen, but if the user wants it, it should all also look nice on on paper, and it should mm -hmm. it should it should not be uh, it should go, go easy for the users. It should be it should be uh, uh, you, cont you you press Control P and we do the rest. This is like an interesting. Like 100 years ago, as Kodak told, and as they introduced the service of developing films, and this way the, the, they introduced the photography for consumers, they told, you press the button and we do the rest. Mm -hmm. So this is, an, uh, we have two questions, and I think we have just enough time. Um, are you aiming to attract QT developers using Python's QT bindings, C++ bindings, or some other language? It should be as well integrated as possible in QT, so it should get into the core of QT. This means uh, C++. So that if we have printer, uh, print dialog, print dialog, and printer setup tools for Qt, that they are available for every Qt application developer, for every user. If we would create them, for example, in Python bindings, we would not get a 100% of adoption. For example, for the application programmers who do their application in C. And perhaps for the system uh, system integrators who want to uh, to create the system in a way that everything is in C, and not have the more resource con consuming Python for such a core part like a print dialog. Yeah, a printer setup tool can be rather in in Python than a print dialog because the print dialog gets too often involved in the day in the daily life of, of of working at the computer and the printer set up tool not so often but most important is also that python can be used as user application as printing printing administration uh, computer uh, system administration application but it should never be used in something which runs while the system is booted because it loads, loads a lot of libraries and, and mm. would uh, make the boot, boot take longer. And at Ubuntu, we have a lot of initiative to try to make the boot faster. And, yeah, and just a little bit. And should also not be at the time of login, because this is a similar situation as with the boot. Yeah. So our last two questions, I think, are kind of related to each other. We have this one. It's like when you've got massive code bases like that of open printing, it often gets overwhelming for uh, for aspiring contributors. Contributors. Mm -hmm. Even issues tagged as beginner become confusing as you don't know where to begin. And then there was this comment from Yannick. So where would one start looking if they wanted to help with that QT print dialogue asking for a friend? So these things of kind of this is a challenge of how do you help beginners get started? And so I think that this, um, so f for all of you, what are some ways that you would advise 
new people to the project to who are maybe this is like their first their first um entry into open source how would you help beginners get started and is there anything that that maybe people can do to help with that process of making one, things easier for one uh, thing for is beginners in the recruitment pro process the first thing which we uh, which we direct our 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 potential students or contributors to is to the source code of cups is one cups is a is, is the core part of of the of the printing system it's the print spooler job manager uh, and so on in cups is uh, cups written by Ma mike sweet started 20, 23 years ago published 21 years ago is very well is a very well structured code very easy to understand i consult it a lot also a due, for, for working on my part, uh, projects of, of open printing. Another nice thing of open printing is it's a lot of partial project, projects which you can compile by themselves, like cups, cups filters, and common print dialog backends, and printer applications, purple, uh, print, purple retrofit, and so on. So you can take one piece, one of the modules, and uh, work with the source code of the modules, build and modify the source code of one module. You don't need to have a big monster to compile, like it is the, uh, the case with the kernel or with LibreOffice. So and another important uh, another important thing is like we have a set of four to five uh, items. Uh, that is the first thing we give to our students. Uh, where mm. uh, those are the very basic things. If they do those things, they will get an overall idea about uh, of what cups and cups filter is all about. We just ask them to build, change, uh, put in a uh, you know a comment, a printf comment in the code, build it, and just uh, get that printed in the logs while while the print is happening so that, that that gives them the idea about how to build the entire system and so there are four to five basic things which we uh, give the students on the first shot once they complete that then we give them the ba very basic easy issues and gradually we increase the complexity of the issues to make them comfortable Yes, yes. In our program, level one is uh, fami fam familiarized with cups and other source code pieces of open printing, and and do the uh, the the simple uh, the simple exercises like uh, adding a, a log item to the code and so on. And level two is uh, go, uh, we give them issues of our issue list, our bug bug reports, and ask mm -hmm. them to work on them. And and then uh, level three is the is the introduction of them into one of our posted projects and in into the project where nice. they slide so for very a very iterative process so yes yes uh, and the whole yeah. thing is is starting already in the end of year uh, n minus one excellent well i know that it is get, getting late so i wanted to thank all of you for coming and what is the best way to get in contact with all of you if people want to talk more about getting involved with open printing uh, they can get in touch with us uh, in our email IDs. They drop in an email uh, to either me or Till. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. My email, my email address is very, very simple. It's Till T I L L at Linux dot com. Nice. And mine is Basu dot B A S U dot A V W E K at the rate of week at the gmail dot com. Yes, Monica. Perhaps you can make it uh, also visible in written form. I did. And that should be in our chat. Okay, and I got them. All right, and for our students, um, if if you would like people to get in touch with it, with you, you can um, feel free to pass that 
add on, but if you would rather not, I understand that. That is okay. And I am on, so Another understand. thing, if you, uh, ha if you ha have a feature request or bug report to one of our projects at Open Printing, don't send direct emails to, my, uh, to, 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 to a week or to me, but use uh, the, the GitHub projects of Open Printing and the issue tracker there. Yes, um, that sadly that should go without saying, but I do know that there's times it's like my email is not a bug tracker. So, all right, and we've got everybody's emails there. Thank you all and so the issues incredibly are immediately much. public. So if someone else has the same mm -hmm. problem, he can see that another has has already posted it. Exactly. Well, thank you all so much. Um, I am so glad y you could be here to participate. Till, thank you for s for s for s editing this up, and I hopefully um, hope to run into all of you at some open source conference one day, and um, and to hear more about what open source uh, what open printing is doing. So anyway, thank you so much for being our guest, especially at a kind of a, a late time for you. And feel free to come back anytime. Thank you for inviting us, Monica. You're welcome. Yeah. And Thanks also a thank lot for inviting us. Of course. And thank you, everybody, for your comments and questions. They were really great. Have a great day. And don't forget, one week from today, Impish Injury release party at 1700 UTC uh, right here in the channel. Special guest. Uh, you saw the hashtag. It is going to be great. Thank you all. Yes. Bye. And also install Impish oh. Indri to have your printing working right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> all right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.